Now let's talk about Aichi transactions. A transaction is an exchange of information between two actors. Transactions are designated by their domain and number. For example, radiology patient registration is transaction RAD-1. There are 75 radiology transactions designated RAD-1 through RAD-75. Here are some IHE HL7 transactions. Patient registration is transaction RAD-1. Place or order management is transaction RAD-2. Filler order management is transaction RAD-3. Let's take a look at patient registration, which is transaction RAD-1. Transaction RAD-1 is used by the actors ADT, order placer, and department systems scheduler order filler. The actor ADT has a role. Its role is adds and modifies patient demographics and counter information. The actor order placer receives patient and encounter information for use in order entry. The actor department system receives and stores patient and encounter information for use in fulfillment in fulfilling orders by the department system scheduler. And MPI, the master patient index, receives patient and encounter information from multiple ADT systems and maintains a unique enterprise-wide identifier for a patient. So this is the interaction diagram of how that would work. So here you have the ADT patient registration system. It sends the ADT message to the order placer. It also sends it to the order filler, and it also sends it to the MPI. So all of these different modules might live inside of the hospital information system. So what we've learned so far is ADT typically starts at registration and goes to the hospital information system. Now we're drilling down into what parts of the hospital information system would need that. It, the order placer, the order filler, and the MPI. And in some places, depending on the workflow, the order filler may be the risk system. So this and this could be in the HIS, and this could be in the risk. Here's another cool thing about IHE is it designates only five possible ADT messages that you can use. An AO1, an AO4, an AO5, A11, and A38. These are the only messages that it wants to see coming out of ADT for this purpose. So let's take a look at the placer order. Placer order management. Transaction RAD2. It's used by the place order placer and department system scheduler order filler actors. The order placer actor places orders and cancels orders as necessary. The actor department system scheduler order filler receives and processes or fills orders and receives order cancellations. So don't let this heavy language make this overly complex. This is really simple. What this says is, hey, one actor is going to put an order in and one order is going to fill that order. So if you, if the HIS places an order for a chest x-ray, the RIS will fill that order or mark it complete. And it's important that we're to understand we're talking about systems here. There's no humans. Even though the humans are what actually trigger this, right? A human has to sit down at the keyboard and place the order, but we're only focused in IHE on how the systems work together. So the HIS system communicating with the RIS system. Those are the actors we're talking about here. So <clears throat> here's the interaction diagram. You have the order placer on this side and the order filler on this side. They're going to use an ORM to make a new order, or they're going to use another ORM to cancel it. And that all comes from what would be an ORC1. If the ORC1 value is NW, it's a new order. And if the ORC value in ORC1 is CA, it would be a cancel. And so that's basically all that diagram says. Filler order management. Transaction RAD3. Transaction RAD3 is used by the order placer and department system scheduler order filler actors. The order placer receives new order. The order change, which is an HL7 2.5 option, and order cancellation requests from order filler, and it receives order status updates from the order filler. The department system scheduler order filler creates new or cancels existing orders, sends notifications <coughs> of order status to the order placer. Again, this just means that the risk system can edit, change, modify orders that comes into it as needed. For example, if somebody orders 
the left hand and the patient comes in and it's their right hand that hurts or has the cast on it, you want to be able to just change that to the right so that you can have the order that matches the side you're actually going to do the study on. All right, now let's talk about some IHE DICOM transactions. Modality image is stored is transaction RAD8. Modality presentation state stored is transaction RAD9. And storage commitment is transaction RAD10. Modality image is stored. Transaction RAD8 is used by the image archive and acquisition modality actors. The acquisition modality transmits the acquired image data to the image archive. The image archive accepts and stores images from acquisition modalities. Again, don't let this heavy technical language trip you up or make you think there's more to this than there is. What this slide says is the CT scanner is going to acquire the images and send it to PAX, and the, the image archive or PAX will accept and store the images that comes from the CT scanner. It's really that simple, and you'll understand when you look at the diagram. So here you have any acquisition modality. They're going to send the images using CStore to the PAX. Modality presentation state store, transaction RAD9. It's used by the image archive and the acquisition modality actors. The acquisition modality will generate grayscale soft copy presentation states to, apply, to be applied to image data. I would say to be applied to raw image data. This actor will support the ability to send presentation state data to an image archive. The image archive will accept and store grayscale soft copy presentation state SOP instances received from the acquisition modality. And what that says is... Once the modality has the raw data, they can make it all pretty and then send it, and the PAX will store it. Here you go. Same thing. You have the acquisition modality, and it's going to send through a C-store a presentation state, and the PAX will store it in its presentation state. Storage commitment, transaction RAD10, used by the image manager and the acquisition modality actors. The acquisition modality makes requests for storage commitment to the image manager for DICOM objects previously transmitted. So that's important. <clears throat> it's going to transmit the images, and that's going to say, hey, can you make sure you store those images? And of course, PAX will say yes, but just because it says yes doesn't mean that it will actually do it. The evidence creator makes requests for storage commitment to the image manager for the images, presentation states, spatial registration objects, dose objects, key image notes, and evidence documents previously transmitted. And the image manager will assume responsibility for reliable storage retrieval and validity of images, presentation states, spatial registration objects, dose objects, key image notes, and evidence documents. And here is what that looks like. So. Now you'll see some of the end services that we talked about previously. So you have the storage commitment action, and then the storage commitment saying, yes, I will store that. That's all done with end action and end event report. And then same thing here. You have the evidence creator. So this would be a workstation. You know, if a radiologist is looking at the images and he makes an annotation on the image or he draws an arrow on the image, he's creating evidence. On that image and you want to store any markups he puts so again you have a storage commitment through an end action and a storage commitment yes I will through the end event report and so that would be an example of where you would get an evidence creator storing markups all of this happens thanks to the wonderful world of IHE thank you for watching